Hello and welcome back to Sonic Lab. Uh, we're here today with the Digitact from Electron and Cenk from Electron, aka Dataline, who's actually over here because you were performing a gig on Saturday night in a yeah, festival, right? That was in a, right. In a, with the very uh, Digitact as well. Yeah, it, was, it went really well. Uh, it was lovely being there. Yes, uh, yeah, it was great. Excellent. Well, we're here to kind of answer a lot of the questions. I mean, a few weeks ago, well, six weeks ago now probably, we did uh, a preview because I had a, a Digitact to take a look at. And the idea was to get some questions. Cenk was going to come over a little early earlier than we'd anticipated, mm. but he's here now. So thanks for the questions. And now we can get started. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, perhaps those people who uh, don't know what Digitact is, let's start with just a basic outline of that, right? So the Digitact is an uh, eight voice digital drum computer and a sampler. Um, you have eight audio tracks. And on top of that, you have eight MIDI tracks. So it's 16 tracks in total. Uh, you have um, an input. There are two, two inputs here where you can sample into the machine. Um, you have a lot of parameters per track, which we will go into. Then you have a sequencer. And on that sequencer, you can, of course, um, sequence your sounds as well as your MIDI tracks. But the cool thing about it is that all of these parameters as available per track, they can be automated in the sequencer. Which is the electron way, the parameter lock way. Yes. Uh, we should point out there is a stereo input into this, mm -hmm. but it does sample in mono yeah, and monitors right. in mono as well. Yes. 16-bit yeah. 48K sample That is rate? right. OK. Yes. And while we're there, maximum sample length. That's one of the questions that mm -hmm. came in is? Yeah. It's a 33 seconds okay. that you can sample uh, into it for. If you want a sample that is longer than 33 seconds, you will have to transfer it over USB. Ah, but you can't. So, but, so it is possible. It is possible. Um, the memory of the Digitact is one gigabyte of storage and you have 64 megabytes to work with. So you can transfer a sample that is 64 megabytes long and use that, but then you will be running out of the memory that you're using with. So, right, okay. And it is designed to be a, a, a drum machine rather than a full-fledged sampler, such as the Octatrack. So therefore, um, the memory is not as, um, uh, you know, on the Octatrack you can stream from the card, but here you only have 64 megabytes to work with. And we need to consider that it's in mono, meaning that... Um, That's still a few minutes, isn't it? It is. It's, I think it's around more than 10, if I'm correct. Yeah, so it's five meg, it was uh, 10 megs a minute stereo, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and uh, and in my experience, it's been... I, I've, I haven't had any issues with the space, actually, because you kind of use it as like a one-shot trigger um, right. sampler thing. And one other cool thing is you have a lot of parameters on the tracks. So the samples that you put in there, they can be changed drastically. And, up, and adding the sequencer, where you can automate all these parameters, you have a lot of things to play around with. And of course, uh, those of you perhaps been watching the news, this has kind of uh, inspired the whole Mark II of some of the other instruments mm. as well. But we, and also, we've got this lovely screen, which I, can, I have to say, you can see from almost any angle. And it is very bright. And it really does change the user experience quite considerably. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. it's. I guess uh, we all have been waiting for a, a, a good screen on an electron machine, and uh, finally it's here, yes. So uh, what are we going to take a look at, then? We should probably uh, get yeah. cracking. Yeah, we should. I mean, yeah, so we have the eight audio tracks, and these are the samples that I have here. This is an interesting track, because we have an, um, an just a, a wave. It's just like a wave so file. Single cycle. Yes. But you're looping it. Exactly. So it becomes like a synthesizer. And these are the, um, it comes with how many samples? It comes around 400 samples with the unit. And um, majority of these, they have been synthesized uh, by, by Electron. Um, and so made from scratch. Sounds, right, yeah, okay. they're very custom. And uh, I think it's a great set of sounds. And these sounds that I have here, and the sounds that I use in my own gigs and my own music, I'm still using the factory stuff. Of course, I've been sampling some stuff in here through the inputs into the Digitac, which that's where the fun is. But the sounds that it's come with, I think it's a very good starting point, I would say. And these are velocity sensitive, these pads, right? Uh, unfortunately, they're not. No, okay. no they, they are not velocity sensitive and no aftertouch either. But uh, you have a chromatic mode, so you can play any sound that you put in there chromatically. Or if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can play them chromatically also. Right. And uh, we have some other sounds. And we should point that monophonic voices, the samples as well. Yes. So you're not going to be playing kind yes. of poly lines with that. No. And uh, it's worth considering that the sample engine is monophonic. You sample in 
uh, monophonically, it's a mono sampler, but the machine itself is in stereo. The digital effects, reverb and delay, they are stereo, especially the delay has got a ping pong mode where you can uh, um, separate, like enhance the the depth of the, the, the panning. Yeah, and and you can pan the individual voices. Exactly, as well. like for example, the snare sound, you can pan it around, and each of the tracks offers you an LFO. So if you really want like a, a pad sound, like Garde. this sound to be like uh, panning around, you can use the pan uh, parameter here, and here we are, and then apply it, and so you can do it like that if you want the stereo image to be wider. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pressing on this because I see a lot of comments about it on the internet that yes, it's a mono sampler, but it doesn't, the machine doesn't sound mono at all. It's yeah, yeah. stereo. Okay, yeah. all right, mm -hmm. cool. So you got, you're using a lot of the stock sounds, but you've also got some custom sounds there. We, maybe we should look at the sampling process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to sample into it, you press this button first. Now we come to the recorder page. Here you can choose the threshold of the recording. So when the input passes the threshold level, you start yeah, recording. Record, right. So here we have my phone hooked up to it, the Volca FM and the Sub 37. They go through a mixer and the mixer output goes in here. Right. So let's press, uh, let's arm the recorder first. So I press yes, and now it's armed. So when the signal comes in, it's gonna record. So let's press play. Oh, what's yeah. this little app you've got running on the phone? Is it? Uh, I forgot the name actually, what was it? We, we have to have a look at that, but it's a nice app. And uh, so we stop that now. And now what I want to do is maybe go to, it's still recording, so I could. Get some sounds like that from there. And from the Walker FM. Chip tunes. Yeah, just some Fine presets there. <laughs> so, so now we recorded uh, about 30 seconds there. And you could preview it here like this. So that's the one. So let's try trimming this here. On the screen, you can easily see the start point and the end point. It's a very cool way to see, you know. It's a very responsive screen, actually, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So let's see, okay, I want this one here, because this was from the iPhone this week. So I press yes, and now that is trimmed for me. So I press yes again. And it asks me to rename the file. I'll just call something random for now. And then press yes. So now this is saved into the plus drive. Ah, OK. Right. And now it asks me where should I assign. Straight away, right. Straight away. So I press this track here. Now I want to continue and maybe look at the other things that I captured from the sub 37, for example. So we go to the start point of that. And you can see it starts exactly here. So, mm -hmm. so I could trim that, press yes again. So is this saving it as a separate file or a marker of the original WAV that you recorded? It's uh, the original WAV that is being recorded, it is stored in there. It's, you don't destroy it when you're picking out and saving them and assigning them to tracks. Uh, I think this is the beauty of this thing. It's a kind of an old school sampler. So. Imagine you would have like an acoustic drum set that's all mic'd up. You hit all of them one time and you press this record and now you got all the hits. So now you just have to trim them and then save them to right. your memory like right. I've been doing. So now this is the sub 37. So I'm going to assign it to this track here. And finally, we have the Volca uh, FM. We played some chip tunes on that. And here we go. It starts exactly there. <laughs> oh, it's cream van. Yes. Is there one going past? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, so I could adjust the end point a bit here. Um, and yeah, it finishes there. And I press yes again. And now, again, it asks me a name. I could randomly rename it. Right. And then, etc. So the sampling process is very easy and fast. Uh, it's been uh, working out really well like that, actually. And let's. Okay, so that was the sample, but you can hear that there's some kind of uh, sound is different because there was some parameters changed for that track beforehand. Ah, okay. but, so th th this is the way that it works because when I assign the sample, I'm only changing the source. The rest of the track parameters are still the same. So you could swap, if you've got some automation and stuff going on on that track, you could just swap the sound source out. Yes. 
and uh, that makes it a bit more interesting and versatile. And uh, yeah, you can have and again, and, and the, sam the uh, sample selection is also parameter lockable as well. Of right? course, yeah, right. yeah. So we, we managed to capture these sounds, and these were the sounds that we had. Yeah. So let's try try um, locking some sounds, like automating these things that we recorded. So so let's go into the step sequence edit. So put some steps in like this, for example. So now all of these parameters that I have, they can be locked. So I can say on this step, I want to have the start point maybe here. There is a clicking at the beginning of the sound because it probably is not starting at a zero point of the audio. But you can go to the amp page and... Just give it a little tap. That's helped it out, right. yeah, just a bit. And then you could select another start point here. So it's very easy to come up with interesting results of something that you've recorded in there. So on the sample playback page, you have the tune parameter. It's over four octaves. You have um, playback, so you can do reverse. You can even loop the audio, which we will get to in, in, later on. You have a bit reduction parameter. And as you were saying, you can you have a sample selection parameter here, and that can be locked per step. So you can say, on this step, I want to have some other sound, like this was recorded from a Minolog, and then, yeah, straight away, you can add it into the mix. Then you have start and end points on these, and a loop here. Let's go to the next page, which is the filter. Um, it's, you have two pole, low pass, and high pass filters. Right. And in the future, yeah, we may be able to these are, these, are these are digital as well, so it's, yeah. It's all firmware upgradable, I guess. Right? It is, in theory it is, and um, yeah, it would be very nice to be able to have more filters in there, and uh, yeah, in the future, we're hoping to be able to do that. And this is how it sounds like. And you also have a filter envelope. Let's go to the next track, which you have the amp page. You have an envelope, an overdrive, a digital overdrive parameter. You have sand for reverb and delay effects. Let's turn those on and go to the effects settings. That's common effects, is it? Or yes, it? it's common effects. So it's a sand effect, basically. The delay has a, like a filter, which is a very nice touch, I think. And the delay can be fed into the reverb also, which is very nice. It's got that kind of classic electron ambient yes. surrounding sort of vibe to it. Yeah. And then you have an LFO. Uh, let's assign the LFO to the tune, for example. So it's very audible. And the LFO can be going up to audio rates. And then you can get crazy results like this. You can even use the envelope as like an envelope. Uh, sorry, you can use the LFO as like an envelope as well. So, so one shot mode. Yes. So I've got, I'm using that as a fade, so it fades out, or I can make it fade in. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Yeah, so the LFO has been a very interesting part of this machine, actually. It's, uh, I'm getting some very interesting results like that. And maybe we could have a take a closer look at that. Is that Carta, on here? Carta lliure i un pressupost gairebé limitat perquè es comenci a fabric. And it's like you could set it to loop mode, so you could loop. Carta, 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 carta lliure i un pressupost curan, curan, curan. A uh, cool thing is, once you got this type of, oh, that's a nice bass sound, you can yeah, go yeah, the chromatic. Can... <laughs> yeah, this is pretty funky. Uh, and what's cool is now you can go into the LFO and maybe assign the start parameter. And so it's getting kind of granular. Yeah, yes. Uh, you get some very interesting things that can happen. Even assign it to the uh, the play mode, which decides if the, pans, the if the sample should be played reverse or forward or in loop. You can even modulate it, and you get some very interesting results. It's definitely worth uh, checking it out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, uh, and that's just a kind of big pile of speech that you're just dipping into. Yeah, it, right? exactly. And let's see. So we had that melody. 
but that melody changed because we were messing around with the LFO. So we can clear the LFO settings on that track by pressing LFO and clear. So now it's as it was. Ah, that's a nice tip. Uh, you can apply that to all the pages and many other things actually like that. So now we add that. Let's go to the kick track and uh, add some kicks into the steps. I will say, it may not always come across on YouTube, but it, it does sound pretty good, this as well. You have nice D2As and you get a lot of bottom end in the, yeah. the beat. And uh, so we could go to the other track and put some steps in. And so now, let's say that you've got this pattern going on. It's very easy to save this now. All you need to do is press function and yes, and now it is saved in there. Then you, you can save your projects uh, and it will be in your memory. It's so patterns, when you're in pattern mode, uh, you can then select patterns on the fly and have them chain into one another. Can you have them, will they, when they play back, can you have them play back at the point, at the same point in the next pattern? You know, like some sequences you can kind of come, if you're at beat two and you change the next one, it picks up the next pattern from beat two or you can have it wait mm. until the next time round. Uh, on the Digitact, uh, you can only, you can change the pattern and it will restart from the beginning. Right, okay. Of it. So, but on the rhythm and the analog four, there are features that allows a bit more uh, extensive ways to change the patterns. And another question that's been coming in quite a lot from uh, the, the users uh, who saw the preview video is pattern chain mode, song mode, is there anything of that or is it more mm. real time? It's, a, it's more of a real time. Uh, there isn't a song mode as such. Um, you can change pa chain the patterns. So you can say, okay, I want to play these three patterns here and they will be chaining each other. Uh, but right now there isn't a way to um, say, I want pattern A, pattern one to play eight times and pattern two to play five times. Right. Um, this may, we may be able to upgrade that. Uh, you know, we are considering some things, a solution for that, but uh, it's, it's uh, kind of early to say, and hopefully yeah, we, we will be able to solve that, but there isn't a song mode. As right, such. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, is there more to see on this? Because you've also got the step lengths and the, mm -hmm. the ability to have different s numbers of steps per exactly, track. Exactly, yeah. So stuff, yeah. we had that basic beat here. So we could go to the, the chord track and maybe assign that to like uh, six steps, which is actually nicer now, less information in that track. And what's cool is that you have the trick conditions. So you can say on this step, I don't want it to get it triggered every time. I want to have a percentage of chance. 59% chance of triggering that. Maybe we'll lower it, 33. And maybe on here I want to add another note, which is going to be a very high note. And I could say, I want this to come in every third time out of three. So you can build up conditional kind of tunes. Yeah. So, and I guess when you're, so I mean, is this sort of thing that you're using when you perform? So? Absolutely, yeah, I use this feature a lot. It's a really cool feature, I think. For example, like if I go like this and put a lot of steps in here. And now I can like hold multiple steps and say I want to have 41% chance on these hi-hats. Here I want to have 67 and etc. Uh, so you can end up with a quite big cyclical yes. patch. So it, yeah, it, it's a repetitive step sequencer, but with this feature you can make stuff that is not so Know, repetitive to listen and it's kind of more evolving and another cool thing is when you hold the step we have re-triggering you can do this type of stuff and you can also do micro timing so you can like nudge the steps a bit ah so you can get into that because uh, one of the other questions that came up was if you record a pattern you go that's great but i just want to tweak some of those notes can you can you actually get in and do that as well absolutely the, the sequencer as with other Electron products, uh, the sequencer is very editable. You go into the step recording mode and you hold the step and say, okay, on this step, I want to change the tuning. I want to have bit reduction. I want to start here, uh, sorry, end point here, start point there. You could even say, okay, I want to change the sample to this one. The filters it can be like this, the filter envelope, etc. You get the idea. So it's very editable. And on top of this, you have the trick conditions and the LFO to add more movement to right. the sound. And um, yeah, that that's, makes it quite interesting, I think, like that, yes. 
So I suppose are we heading into the territory of uh, MIDI now? Yeah, this MIDI. Is, this mm -hmm. is the thing that, that this has come on a little bit. I think when mm -hmm. they first got one, the MIDI part wasn't quite as developed, but now mm -hmm. MIDI is is a kind of happening thing, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, the, the MIDI, the, you have eight tracks of MIDI as well as the eight audio tracks. So we could have a look at that. So let's go to this pattern here, because on this one, on this pattern, I have the tracks set up. So this track is controlling the sub 37 here. This MIDI track is controlling the Korg Volker FM. Right. And this one is controlling the analog heats. Ah, okay. So I, each of the MIDI tracks offers you eight MIDI CC values to be, uh, you know, automatable from the Digitact. So I can, like, for example, change the filter, and you could see on the screen that it's responding. Right. Okay. And this can, of course, be, you know, as as, as soon as you have the the um, parameters set up here then you're in the land of yeah, electron sequencing to do weird stuff. So um, just to be clear on the, because uh, there's been some question about how is the sequencer structured. So each, each of the eight MIDI sequences is effectively a single note sequencer, but you can then stack an mm -hmm. additional three notes on top of that. So you can use it as a chord sequencer as well. Yes. Can we go through that yes, a little bit? I can sure. do that. So let's go to the Volker FM, because that's a, it's a three voice polyphonic keyboard uh, synthesizer. And um, so you could go into the step mode and say, okay, I, on this note step, I want to have this chord. Here, let's have this chord. And here you can have this and here, maybe that. So it record, otherwise you'd be dialing them in and then and you can do it. You can also dial it in. Right. Uh, for example, this one, you could say, okay, I actually want it. You can see on the screen what type of uh, chord you're building. And one cool thing is that you can build up a chord like this and copy it and paste it into another uh, step. Then, by changing the root note, you're cha actually changing, you know, you can see on the screen that right. the other notes are following it because you're stacking the notes on top of each other. And... Oh, this interesting question. Is it possible to affect the... Uh, a a apply effects to the actual uh, audio input as well, because obviously mm -hmm. we're monitoring that mm -hmm. through here. Is mm -hmm. that possible? Uh, currently it's not, but um, yeah, hopefully in the future we'll be able to add that. Uh, I suppose what you could do is maybe uh, use a voice and have a sort of a machine in the old traditional sense that would be, yeah. give mm -hmm. you access to all of those parameters mm -hmm. and apply those in real time. Mm, that, a, there you go, ask for that one. That sounds like a good I one. I will so we, definitely ask for that. So uh, that yeah. you could send, you send it to the effects, you can apply the audio mm -hmm. parameters to it and it's just yeah. the sound source comes from the external audio. That I mean, it, it would be, Pretty cool, actually, if yeah, if this was uh, available, and hopefully one day, uh, yeah, because the filters are actually really good. They're they're, um, they're digital. The whole machine is digital, but I find them very satisfying. Just like the Octatrack filters uh, in my uh, e to my ears, it's been very good. Another cool thing about the, the MIDI tracks is that we now allow the trick conditions. Um, so let's say that we have this chord structure here. So let's say on this one. I don't want it to be triggered every time. So you can say 33 chance. Here, 75. Right, so you can apply the same stuff. And presumably, um, when you're using the controller modes, you can parameter lock the controller values as well? Yes, you can do that. Let's have a look at that. So let's uh, get rid of this awesome sequence that we just made. And let's go to the sub 37 tracks. And Let's just go into step sequencer and uh, put a lot of notes in like this, for example. So now, so now with the real-time recording mode, I can enable it and then change the length of the per step and then record it into sequencer. That's good. Then you could go into the MIDI CC values, which I have mapped to various controls, such as the filter. So, so that's presumably cut, uh, cut off and resonance. Cut off and resonance here. So let's try record them into the sequence. Okay. Let's try the other controls. For example, there's noise level. So oh, nice. I want to have on the snare hits. I want to have noise. This one didn't sound. So we got open the filter. Yeah. And I think th there's a little. Yeah. The length is very short on this step, so we can. Yeah. And 
So oh. you're applying that parameter lock philosophy to MIDI control. What about the LFO? Can you modulate? Let's try that. So on these uh, value five, I have, yeah. These are the oscillator tunings, so let's assign the LFO to that. So it was value six. So we select value six, press yes. So now the oscillator range right, is changing. Okay. Yeah. I, we should also point out that you, I mean, we're using the keyboard to play it in, mm -hmm. but you, you could go into chromatic mode and just play that stuff in of as course. well. It doesn't, you don't have to have it. No. It's perhaps easier if you want to input chords from a playing thing. But that yeah. is really, that's the main reason why we have the MIDI keyboard here is to be able to do that. But of course you have the chromatic mode. Yeah. And you know, it's like you can control the whole thing from here. So it's like, okay, I want to change the filters. And now the LFO is affecting that. That's so if we load. So it's kind of like a. It breathes, you know, it gives life to MIDI gear that's. Yeah. It's like a patch now. So, so you can use the, the, um, the, the LFO as like an envelope as well. So you can set it to one trig mode. And that's what it all does. Right. And you could select the start point of the waveform of the LFO. Oh, it's quite powerful. I mean, and these, this is just, but this is just dealing with MIDI CC. That's, yeah. But that's very powerful. I mean, what about program changes and stuff like mm. that? Does it, does it deal with that? That's actually my favorite one because it gives me a result that I don't expect, and it pushes gear like this that can receive program change into like territories that it's not. Yeah, you can't do it on their own. So you have a program change value. So when I change that, oh yeah, we it, can see. The, yeah, I think we can get that on that camera. It's uh, very responsive there. Yeah, and. So now imagine if you had like multiple gear that could receive program change. And when you change to a different pattern and they've, all the MIDI tracks have got the program change values assigned, they will all receive them. And you could use it as a sort of central point, load the pattern, all the gear changes to the right stuff. Yes. yes. I, I mean, you, we were talking before you started filming and you know that you're using this now as the center of your yeah, live is. performance. And is it for that reason? Or? Not for the MIDI reason specifically. I, I, don't, I don't do the MIDI sequencing when doing live. It's too much on the brain for me. Uh, I just keep things audio and that's nice. The reason why this is the master is that I really like that I can have a BPM per pattern. So one pattern is going to start at 80 BPM. The other one is 160. Uh, this gives me, uh, you know, frees my mind to think of other things. The second of all reason is that I can save the mute states per pattern. So I could say, OK, I'm going to switch to this pattern. It's going to start at 160 BPM. Great. Now the, 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 the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat, they won't come in. It will be only the melodies. because right, so I remembers mute states, right? Yes, okay. and for me, those features are like really important because when you have it set up as the master, this means that when you switch to another pattern in this one, and when you fire it off, you know that it's going to sound exactly what you programmed. Right. Yeah, 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 I see. This was missing for me in the previous electron boxes where I had to think, okay, the BPM is 130, I need to mute these tracks. Now it's ready. But now I don't think of that and frees my mind. So uh, can you p-lock the uh, program change? Yes, yes. Okay, let's do come that. on, let's see what let's, sort of random stuff that, yeah. that just throws up. So we have this sequence now. So we're going to real-time recording mode and mess around with the program change. It doesn't sound really good, but we could change it a bit. Eventually you get something good going on. Yeah. Oh, I like that little. Yeah, it's it's a bit yeah, <laughs> and it's kind of cool. It's like a Christmas tree. It's like as a well. light shot. And let's try automating the other parameters, such as the note, for example. And let's do the other MIDI CC values. So you get some very animated kind yeah. of stuff going on there. And you can of course like. Set it for like three steps. So you see here, this one is a bit sounding weird, so you can go in there and say, I want to have a different program here. Let's do it to eight steps. Right, so you can shoot, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, all the 16 tracks can have a different step length, so you can make poly 
metric stuff on the polymetric, not polyrhythmic. No, okay, it's not right. polyrhythmic like that. No, no. Wow. So uh, that's really that is actually very impressive to mm -hmm. see that. And obviously, you know, the, some some synthesizers uh, will uh, tra um, accept program changes super fast. I know mm -hmm. the base station Novation base station two is super snappy. Yeah. Sub thirty seven is pretty good, but not quite as fast. So you know, depending but, on your gear, yeah, results but, may vary. But that's what makes it interesting because uh, you get these weird, unexpected results with that, and that's what I really enjoy. The only problem is you've got to remember which patches you're using when you set when you're storing the one that you start with. Onto you have to think, oh, which where can yeah. I save this pattern? <laughs> and that's where the sampling comes really you handy just with this. That. And that's what I've been doing at home, like send these mid weird MIDI stuff into various gear, automate the hell out of them and sampling it in there and there you go i have that sound and when you sample it in there you have much access to much more things you can remix what you have captured right another cool thing i would like to show is um, let's mute the, this track so we only have the beat so we've got the analog heat here let's turn it on let's change the character a bit let's see that's nice now now on this MIDI track, I have set it to control the analog heat. So I can change the filter, for example, from the Digitact. Now, so you, you know that this can be automated now. So you can go on these steps here, have this. You can uh, change the character, oh, first yeah. step also. So you can go like this. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So let's see here, just on these last four steps, you want to have it like this. Maybe I, uh, just a foot. Yeah. And maybe here we want to have it even like the. Uh, maybe like this. Wow. Yeah. One thing I like about this automation as well, because I mean, if you're doing this kind of automation at a sequencer level, you have to kind of go. This is where I'm starting from. You need to put an event in, then you need to put the next event. Whereas this seems to that the current state is what it remembers. So you don't have to go, hold on a minute, I have to make sure it's at naught before I then go to B10, right? Yes. It, you know, the results vary actually, depending right. on what gear you're using. But uh, so far, um, it's been uh, quite um, useful, so to say, and uh, less taxing to my brain. So whatever I've been throwing at it in the MIDI tracks is kind of it's, it's working well, actually. And Another cool feature that we haven't talked about is let's save this pattern is that we have a feature called control all. So you can control the all eight audio tracks at the same time. Oh, really? So That's we have this beat with the weird automation for the heat. So if I hold the track button and change like the tuning, I will change the tuning of the all eight audio tracks. So So maybe I could say that, okay, I want to reverse all the tracks and change the endpoints. And can you reset that really quickly? Yes, we're coming to that now. So you can do these weird things. And while this is being sequenced as well, it's pretty badass. And you can change even per sample, sample assigned to per track, so you can go. And that works on some sort of offset, does it? It's offset, yeah. So when you're ready to leave this mess, you just press function and no. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I can see that's uh, got a lot of creative potential there as oh, well. Yeah. Especially when playing live, uh, you do all this crazy stuff and uh, yeah. People just don't expect that to happen to music sometimes, and you do it. It's really cool. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, just a little bit more about storage and what have you. So, uh, samples are called to the plus drive, which is a gigabyte. Um, I'm guessing Overbridge and is, uh, 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 is coming at some point. It's yes, not there it's yet. It's planned right? to come, and uh, we I know that we're working on it. So I've seen stuff that's happening. Yeah, with Overbridge, you'll be able to stream the all eight audio tracks into your DAW. And the media tracks, yeah, you'll be able to automate. And uh, the stuff that you save to your plus drive, mm -hmm. what happens there? Can you get that off to back it up? I mean, mm -hmm. what, what's the situa mm -hmm. current situation? It's a with very that? good question about the backup. Is uh, right now you can't take out the samples that you've recorded into this thing through USB out. But I know that this is planned and we're working hard on it, that you will be able to get the samples out of the machine. 
but right now uh, it's only in. Right. Out is not possible, but it's coming. I know it's it's going to happen. Yes. Right. So I mean, guess obviously, yeah. just record your tunes. Yeah, that's <laughs> what you should do. Right? But, Make but music yes. and record them. But ultimately, you should be able to back a unit up, like yeah. 100%. And that is kind of missing right now, unfortunately. But we're working on it. We're aware of it. That's the main thing. And then you can save your projects. So if you go into this menu here, you can save it. You have a lot of project slots. It's 127 or 28 slots you have. And I already have a lot of things. And each that of those I've has what? Uh, how many banks of patterns? Because you get you bank, don't you? Really? Yes. So each of the project has got eight banks. Right now we're on bank G. So if I press bank G, and now I have these patterns available. So if so, I go here, it's just a different pattern. If I go to bank, the very first pattern, and I will hear this. Right. So effectively, you've got a lot of granular. I mean, it, a project can be it's, enough, it should easily be enough for a set. Uh, no. Absolutely. I mean, for a set, this is the bank that I use. And here I have, yeah, uh, 12 patterns. Right. And that's enough for me. But of course, you need to consider that I'm using other gear. If you're using only this, yeah, you got eight banks and each of the banks offers you 16 patterns. And they can be quickly saved and recalled so you have, you know, you can do the right. It's when you're saving and recalling things. projects from the plus drive that it slows down a bit because of the access. So mm -hmm. to load a, a complete pattern from a complete project from the plus drive, you will need to stop you, the machine then. You need to tell some jokes. Yes. Yeah. Or right. just sing into the microphone. Like, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I spent a little bit of time with it, and I must admit, a, I found the sound to be very inspirational, but also it feels easier to grasp because. Mm. I, the, you know, the, it has been leveled at some electron here that it's a bit like, oh my goodness, this is just too much to kind of take on. Whereas this feels like a good way of kind of learning the electron way, particularly with that sequence stuff. Yeah, I agree with you. The for me, it's been a lot easier to use this as well, and I really like that. It's, there's a there's some some kind of magic about the simplicity and also the depthness combined together because it's a deep machine, and you have the simple interface. Then the man and machine interaction becomes much easier and enjoyable and creative. I think. Yeah, and I think the screen goes a long way to help because oh, wow. you're not that's, like peering at it, oh. so you just see. Yeah, so that yeah, is a much. Mean, yeah, well, that screen is just I could say. Yeah, thank you for making that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's available now, though I know that it's in high demand, mm. so you might not be able to get it straight away. Mm. What's the cost? It's uh, six five nine British pounds and seven four nine euros. Right, OK. Um, so, uh, which it makes it one of the more affordable electrons as well, right? Yeah, it is. Compared to other boxes such as the Rhythm and the Analog 4, yeah, it's half the price, similar to the heat price, yes. Right, OK. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, well, that's it for uh, this time. I hope uh, we've been able to answer all of your questions on the Digitac from Electron. Digi or Diggy? Well, Digitact in uh, Swedish, but in other languages, it could be easier to say Digitact. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's it, though. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We've got a lot more content coming. See you next time. Bye.